Eva and the entire family know that were times different, we would have had a line around this funeral home that would have stretched for hours. Although, PJ, I think, would be the first to admit that it doesn't matter if we had 500 people here or one person. As long as we just stopped and remembered that his life was a gift given by a good and loving God. And that's a gift that can never be taken away. Time-honored tradition throughout the centuries and back before there were funeral homes, there were villages, there were tents, there were people who wandered the desert. When somebody died, they gathered around that physical body and they celebrated, they prayed, they remembered what life was really all about. And then the next day, the body would be brought to an altar area where a more formal service was held. So the prayers and things that you're gonna hear tonight aren't just some fancy words in a book. They're words that have been passed down from generation to generation. And if you really listen tonight, there's one four letter word in there. You know, those four letter words can be tough, right? There's one four letter word that appears a lot and it's not A-L-O-T, it's hope. My personal prayer for all of you tonight is that you walk out of here stronger than when you came in. That you remember that hope is a beautiful, wonderful thing that we don't necessarily take with us when we transition, but we leave for those we love. I wanted to begin our time with discussing PJ's faith. I must confess, I did not know him, although I kind of feel like I'm an honorary McHale after being blessed, although I wish, frankly, I never met you, but being blessed with witnessing what true family means. And that goes for the, I don't want to call you in-laws because you're not in-laws, you're sons. I mean, that's just, I got that. I, I get it. I see it. But family was primarily Eva and PJ's world in a good way. But in speaking with John the other day, I know that PJ's faith comes from those before. It was nurtured by all of you and by his life circumstances. And it's always impressive to me when a deeply intelligent scientific being has a faith that can move mountains. Because usually those kind of don't go hand in hand. So that's something to think about. But as I was Listening to John and reading, he wrote me a, a beautiful uh, one page that, I mean, it, it could have been extrapolated upon into volumes, uh, each, each little bullet point. But I could see and I could feel your mother and father. I could do it. I, I just, I felt them on the page. And as we were discussing some of the practical things of a funeral, like needing a casket, John said, listen, Deej, and he didn't want to ever take away from Eva or the kids. I, I, the respect was beautiful. But he said, when we picked out my dad's casket, PJ wanted one thing. He wanted the religious corners, the pieta, that age-old Michelangelo image. I know we have some artists here of Jesus being held by his mother. Yeah, powerful. So I told John that although this particular casket, we couldn't get the Pieta, I was going to have one for him today. And I left it out on purpose because I wanted to put it in with all of us together. Because as Jesus was held by this one amazing soul, I can't help but think 
that the souls of all those who've gone before hold all of us when we need them. And as I place this on PJ's pillow, I hope you remember that he too holds all of you whenever you need him. And let that be the start of our hope as Deacon Dave Rosinus comes forward to lead us in our vigil prayer. Hi, good evening, everyone. And on behalf of Father Regenti, Father Marinelli, all the deacons, all the staff, and personally myself and my wife, Barb, please accept our condolences. Um, you're definitely in our prayers and in our hearts as we go forward. One thing that uh, DJ had left is a cross that we placed on DJ's casket tomorrow. And it also is a sign of the sacrifice that he knows and that he gives and that he'll be with Jesus as, he, as he's been before. Now, let us begin the vigil as we begin all good things. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we believe that all ties of friendship and affection, which knit us as one throughout our lives, don't unravel with death. Confident that God always remembers the good that we've done and forgives our sins, let us pray, asking God to gather Peter to himself. Dear Lord, our God, the death of our brother Peter recalls our human condition and the brevity of our lives on earth. But for those who believe in your love, death is not the end. Nor does it destroy the bonds that forge in our lives. We share the faith of your son's disciples and the hope of the children of God. Bring the light of Christ's resurrection to, on this time of testing and pain as we pray for Peter and for those who love him. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, but eternal in heaven. So we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive recompense according to what he did in the body whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is Psalm number 23. And our response is, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose, beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and staff that give me courage, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Next, have a reading of the gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. I also didn't know PJ well, but what spoke volumes of Eva and PJ is shortly after I was ordained, I started getting Christmas cards. And God bless you. It was a way to share the family. It was cards that Eva and PJ had sent to say what was happening so that we know as what you shared, what we knew about your family is just a beautiful way to be able to to know all of you, at least to begin to know you. And I know he touched many lives as a husband, a father, a grandfather, a brother, a friend. And that's why tonight we come together not only to pray for PJ as he's brought back to the Lord, to the room that he's been prepared for. But to come and pray together for and with each other as a community. And we come with God's grace. Because our love for him doesn't end with death, not in the least. And the endless questions, the strong emotions that you might have, are all part of that love and part of that tough work of grieving. Even Jesus grieved for his friend Lazarus. And there's no right or wrong way to grieve. We can go through a whole range of emotions and questions day to day or even moment to moment. And grieving is very personal, but it's not meant to be experienced alone. God provides his grace to feel that, begin to feel that comfort and peace. But what he also provides is the community of friends, family, everyone around us to help us with that work of grieving. So as we come together today for Peter, for PJ, and we also come for each other, as we continue our service, let us pray that we begin to heal we begin, as DJ said, to have hope and to continue to love. We'll now pray the prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Let us turn to Christ Jesus with confidence and faith in the power of his cross and resurrection. Risen Lord, pattern of our life forever. Lord, have mercy. I respond, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Promise an image of what we shall be. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Son of God, who came to destroy sin and death. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Word of God, who delivered us from the fear of death. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Crucified Lord, forsaken in death, but raised in glory. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, gentle shepherd who brings rest to our souls, give peace to Peter forever. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you bless those who mourn when and who are in pain. Bless Peter's family and friends who gather around him today. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Brothers and sisters, our true home is in heaven. Therefore, let us pray to our Heavenly Father as Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, you willingly gave yourself up to death so that all might be saved and pass from death to life. We humbly ask you to comfort your servants in their grief and to receive Peter into the arms of your mercy. You alone are the Holy One. You are mercy itself. By dying, you unlock the gates of life for those who believe in you. Forgive Peter his sins and grant him a place of happiness, light, and peace in the kingdom of your glory forever and ever. Blessed are those who have died in the Lord. Let them rest from their labors, for the good deeds go with them. Eternal rest, eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and, and let the perpetual time shine upon, upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all, all the faithful the departed, through the, through the mercy, mercy of God, God rest in peace. in peace. Amen. And may the peace of God, who is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And may the Almighty God bless you, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, please know that you'll be in our prayers, and know that God is with you during this time, and to pride you comfort, and love, and hope. God bless you. Thank you again, uh, Deacon Dave. Yeah, when he walked in and he pulled that Christmas card out, it kind of floored me out there. And I know he had some of you guys in um, yeah. camp, I guess, or religious ed. It was, uh, he had some fond memories. As I always say, you never realize the impact you make sometimes. And that impact goes back, I have to say, John, I keep picking on him. But all of you will eventually, who are watching, you'll eventually receive uh, one of these little books with PJ's obituary and, and all these wonderful readings that the family selected in his honor. And I must say I was quite impressed knowing uh, how much he valued education in the written word as well as the spoken word. Uh, the family picked some beautiful testimonies to cherishing one another loving one another and living life. So when you get this, for those of you who are watching virtually, um, you know, please know that this was very well thought out by the family. But there's a little photo when you open it up of, I don't know who the sheriff was or who was the jailer, but it, it speaks to brotherly love. And it's, to me, it's the quintessential picture of two brothers who love each other. And no other way to start off than with PJ's male best friend, because we know Eva was the, <laughs> the other, <laughs> male best friend and uh, dear brother, younger brother, John, to come forward. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay, so since Deacon Dave has left the room, I'm glad that he got a Christmas card with the picture. I got a Christmas card in steaks. <laughs> um, I've given eulogies for my mom and dad and many relatives, and I uh, sometimes, like at our parents, Pete said he couldn't do it, and he asked me if I would do it, and I said, absolutely. I'm going to really try to do this, and if I can't, 
Molly's going to take over for me. So I want to speak to you today about a time in Pete's life when no one on this planet could possibly know about, namely what it was like to be Pete's little brother, his only sibling. It all started when I came home from the hospital. Our cribs were side by side. The foot of his crib touched the head of mine. And my parents used to say that he would stand at the end of his crib and look into mine and just shake his head. Because <laughs> I'd be sitting there crying. <laughs> Later, I would see that head shake many, many times <laughs> in my life. When he was about seven and I was about five, you probably, everybody in this room probably heard the story about him getting into trouble because he left the yard, something that we were forbidden to do. When he got back, mom was waiting for him. She spanked him and she sent him to his room and I couldn't believe it. Pete was in trouble. Never happened. After an hour or so, mom went up to him, up to his room and she said to him, PJ, she always called him PJ, why would you do such a thing? He then produced a birthday gift that he was saving money to buy for her from the corner store. It was a cheap knickknack that had a fake diamond on the 22nd day of the month of February, mom's birthday. He left the yard to run and purchase it for her as a surprise. It became a cherished possession of hers until the day she died. Even when he did something wrong, he did it for someone else, <laughs> not himself. Try and follow that as a little brother. When I was in first grade, he was in third. I was kept after class. I was so fearful that I was going to miss the bus. My mom didn't have a car and my dad was away on a business trip. When I finally made it to the driveway where the buses were, all the buses were pulling away except one, mine. Pete was standing at the door to the bus yelling, run, run, <laughs> run. And he wouldn't let the bus, bus go. He wouldn't get on the bus until I was there. He was just shaking his head at me and he always had, his, had my back. In third grade, we moved again to a new state, a new school. I went to kindergarten in Pennsylvania I went to first and second grade in Virginia, and now third grade was in New Jersey. And the teacher said that I was being non-responsive in class. She was concerned that something was wrong. She requested a conference with my mom. I requested a conference with Pete. I explained to him that the teacher was not calling me by my right name. She must have me confused with someone else. I told him that the teacher asked me if I was upset because leaving friends in Virginia and I told her, no, that wasn't the case. Pete moved with us too. And turns out there were three Johns in the class. She called one of them John, one of them Johnny, and me Jack. Well, she might as well have called me Fred because I had no idea how she got Jack out of John. <laughs> Pete helped everybody understand. He cleared everything up with my mom, explained it to me what that all meant. And he made sure that everything was right. He just shook, my head, shook his head and he was my best friend. Pete always excelled at school. He was clearly much smarter than me, but he was also a really fun kid to play with. We had an ex he had an exceptional imagination. When we'd be playing G.I. Joe, he had it realism by pretending that his G.I. Joe was calling my G.I. Joe on a walkie-talkie. And he'd say something like this, this is Alpha Bravo Niner, do you read me? I'd say, what? <laughs> he'd say, that's how army guys talk. I said, okay. So he'd repeat, this is Alpha Bravo Niner, do you hear me? And I'd say, copy, this is John. And, and he'd shake his head. And he'd help me think of an appropriate name, like he'd come up with something like Delta Phoenix Charlie or something like that. He took my imagination to a whole new level. We loved to play together and we did so for hours on end. When he got a three-speed bike, Two years later, it was my turn to get a three-speed bike. I got one identical to his. Same brand, same color, literally identical. You couldn't tell them apart. I know, it, I know that it annoyed him because he shook his head when he saw it. But he was my big brother and I wanted to be just like him. In high school, being Catholic, my mom insisted that we take Latin. Pete excelled. Me, not so much. <laughs> Somehow I ended up in Latin three honors. I asked to, to change the class to regular Latin. The teacher is about to sign off on the transfer. She saw my last name and she said, are you Peter's brother? I said, oh geez, <laughs> yes, but it's not what you think. 
And she said, no, you stay, you'll be fine. Stay with honors. So I shook my head. I went home and told him what happened and told him how upset I was that you now I had to live through his great intelligence. But Pete helped me through. He used to say that he did so much of my homework that he went through Latin three honors twice. <laughs> in college, I was longing to see my girlfriend from high school. She was at Boston College and I was in Virginia at JMU. We finally were able to pull it off in, a so in my sophomore year. She would fly to Charlottesville, Pete was gonna meet her and he would bring her up from UVA to Harrisonburg. A few days before, he called me and said he had a change in plans. He was coming to Harrisonburg to pick me up and I could have his car for the week. Are you kidding me? Uh. <clears throat> I said, you would do that? <clears throat> I said, Pete, mom and dad will be furious if they find out you helped me with this and you were in on it. His response was typical. He shook his head and he said, I don't think even you would be that stupid to tell them I'm not. <laughs> he was my confidant. I will end this with one final story the night that he came home from one of his first dates with Eva. I was home from college and he was working at Block Drug. We'd all, we would always talk before we went to sleep. I asked him how it went and he told me everything. Just so you know, Eva, he told me everything. <laughs> <clears throat> he, was, he was beaming. I remember it like it was yesterday. He said, I think that she might be the one. And I'm sure I said something supportive like, you goofball. <laughs> and he probably just shook his head. Pete and I were tight. He was my confirmation sponsor, my best man. We talked about everything. Those conversations will go on. And even if they may appear to be one-sided, I'm sure if I listen hard enough, he'll reach me just like he did my entire life. Pete, Give hugs to mom and dad and the family and friends that are surrounding you. And hey, if mom and dad are mad about Lisa coming to JMU, cover for me, okay? <laughs> Talk soon. I love you and God bless you. Thank you, John. That was quite beautiful. You'll see that shamrock right there has been a, a symbol throughout the ages of, of luck, of good fortune. But you'll see that quote that I, I can't attribute to anybody, and I love to give attributions when appropriate. Our family, a circle of strength, founded on faith, joined by love, kept by God. Luck is just a little part of it. It's the work that you put in. And some of the product of that natural, beautiful work is going to come share some of their thoughts about their dad. And Katie, you're going to come forward first, I believe, right? I was trying not to cry till the end, but thanks a lot, Uncle John. <laughs> <laughs> So that mine just, mine's two parts. So the first part I wrote um, two nights after he passed, and then the second part I wrote today. Can you hear me okay? Okay. My dad. <laughs> my rock. My guiding light. Gracie's bop bop. <laughs> The man who would sing the wheels on the bus a million times a night, and he never got tired of it. Every meal, we have the Facebook portal set up, and Gracie would sit in the high chair and go, bop, 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 bop. And we'd be like, okay, Gracie, okay. And we'd like, they'll turn really quick, like, okay, gosh, we had to get bop, bop on the phone. She'd be like, bop, 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 bop. So we'd get her on the, he'd come on the phone, then she'd be like, beep, 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 <laughs> beep, beep, beep. And he'd be like, the wheels on the bus. <laughs> he sang it honestly like a million times. <laughs> the dad who never missed his daughter's dance competitions or his son's karate matches. The dad who proudly wore Penn State, James Madison, Carnegie Mellon, 
more than his own UVA. The dad who never cared about our grades. <laughs> Only that we were learning and we were curious enough to learn more. I never once had to worry about my grades, only with my mom, <laughs> but not with dad. <laughs> the man who acknowledged his privilege and gave more to charities than, than I can even realize. I was rather lonely when I studied abroad in Paris, but he would come on his work trips with Chanel and we meet and we go to Vesuvio, which was our favorite place. And we joke that it was an Italian pizzeria in the middle of Paris. <laughs> on the Champs-Elysees and he'd get egg on his pizza and we'd, we'd just sit and watch people go by. My dad and I are both very big in reflecting and you know we like to talk about life and philosophy and so he made me feel like I wasn't quite alone. The man who wasn't retired because he was a professional grandpa. The dad who always told me that everything was gonna be okay. I have a complex where I think everyone, you know, doesn't like me. And he always had this saying, just like our favorite show, I Love Lucy, he'd say, everyone loves Katie. <laughs> <laughs> We'd send each other books. <laughs> That's one of them. And um, we'd read them together. And before he passed away, we both read the same book, 10% Happier, and it was on meditation. And he had, I know he brought books with him to Virginia Beach, but he chose to read that one because I gave it to him. Our favorite author is Mitch Album, and that's what's on the bookmark. <laughs> but books on life, philosophy, positive psychology, and most recently, meditation. We both love to read. My dad cared so much for everyone in his life. His main goal was to take care of his family. He sent diapers and wipes to Gracie all the time, so much so that one time, I forget who told him, that I bought my own one time. And he got so upset, he sent money right away to take care of the diapers and the wipes. <laughs> I can't believe he's gone from this earth. I do believe he's still here, though. I look up here, and I know this isn't my dad. This is my dad. This is my dad. He's still guiding me and loving me. And dad, I love you too. Thank you for being the best dad I could have ever asked for. And my second part is a letter of um, gratitude. My dad and I both believed in gratitude as part of positive psych and I hope he can hear this. <laughs> Dear dad, thank you. Thank you for not only life itself, but also for a very, very good life, for a loving life, for a life filled with loving family and friends, for a life full of learning, for my education, for teaching me what love looks like and feels like, for that's the whole purpose of education. Thank you for your amazing advice and guidance I know you're, you'll always be there saying it will all be okay, Katie. Don't fret the small stuff. Thank you for loving my daughter so fiercely with her whole heart. She loved her bop bop and always wanted to call you on Facebook portal. All day we'd hear bop bop, bop bop, beep beep beep. <laughs> I can still hear you singing the wheels on the bus a million times a night. Thank you for loving my husband and telling me that supply chain dude is a good man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for always being there for me. Thank you for Gracie's diapers and wipes. Thank you for such wonderful vacations that we were all reminiscing on tonight. Thank you for hanging up our paintings in our house. Thank you for the Mitch album book collection that we'd send to each other. Thank you for our special bond. Thank you for passing down your love of learning. Thank you for showing me how to love my family unconditionally because of your example. Thank you for our memories in Paris, just you and I, and, I, and you and I with our family. We will always have Paris. 
Thank you for still guiding me today, Dad. I miss you so very much. But I know you're still here with us. And I hope you know just how thankful I am for you and how much I love you. Thank you, Dad. This is why you go first, because they get harder and harder to file. That was absolutely beautiful. Gratitude in a time like this is something that some people forget, but I'm not surprised uh, that you all remembered. Uh, for those of you watching, one of the things that the family will be getting to you uh, is a bookmark uh, we produced in honor of PJ's love of education. And I want to, before our next speaker, just introduce uh, or, or read what was on the back because it is such a powerful quote about living life. It's from Mitch Album in the very famous book, Tuesdays with Maury. So many people walk around with a meaningless life. They seem half asleep, even when they're busy doing things they think are important. This is because they're chasing the wrong things. The way you get meaning into your life is to devote yourself to loving others, devote yourself to your community around you, and devote yourself to creating something that gives you purpose and meaning. And also want to send a special shout out to your husband, Doug, uh, who's watching your little angel um, right now and we know is with us. And um, I half want to do a wheels on the bus one verse. You want to go? <laughs> Eva, lead it. Go ahead. Come on, start. Let's go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round. Oh, <laughs> there you go. So um, I know, I know your little one's going to certainly be hearing that for many years. So again, Doug, we know you're you're certainly with us in spirit. And now we're going to ask. Um, Lauren to come forward and share with us some memories about her dad. I'd like to express the same sentiment as Uncle John. If I can't do this, Jason's going to come up and just... All right. <laughs> okay. I wrote this because Dad was such a... He was so well written, and I don't know how I could ever write something so amazing as him, but... I wanted to write something that I could just get out to the world. Um, I tend to look at my life in terms of chapters. When big changes occur, it, I view it as a chapter ending and a new chapter beginning. I am so grateful that I had the chapters that I did with Dad. They've been filled with so many stories of love and joy that it would take novel after novel to fit in everything that I've been blessed to experience with him. I could go on and on about the many stories I've shared, but no time in the world would grant me the ability to cover all of them. What I most want to share today is what he meant to me as a dad. My dad has had the greatest impact on my life. I know I owe a lot of my happiness in who I am and where I am today, to him. It's the way he created a world in which I had the ability to be who I was and strive for what matters. He instilled so many values in us that have paid the way for our happiness. It wasn't monetary success that made him see us as accomplished, and it's true. He wasn't proud that I sold a painting. He was proud that I had the ambition to paint one. And it wasn't the grades, or the medals, or the degrees that brought him pride. It was our character. And when he saw us go out of our way for each other and others. It wasn't when we were being perfect. It was when we learned from our mistakes or treated another with the same understanding. He wanted us to embrace being human and seeing others as such as well. It was the simplest things that dad would do that made my world, like how he took the time to handwrite people cards or letters just because, or when I would just get home to Jersey and he would stay up way later than usual talking over a drink because he made you feel like your company was worth all the time in the world. He was constantly thinking of his family and how to send a little love their way. And he was telling me everything, always, 
everything was going to be okay. He was right. It always was. But not because things came out perfect, or as I'd hoped they would, but because he gave me the belief that I was capable of handling that, which was before me. He had a greater impact on my life than he'll ever know. And this has been the hardest chapter in my life to end. But as I've come to realize this week, Dad has been giving us the strength and guidance we need to get through challenges like this since we were born. He believed in our family and our ability to carry each other through every challenge life throws our way. And Dad, you were successful because my family is the only thing pulling me through this right now. Jason tells me all the time that he feels like he knows my grandpa, Mikhail, though he's never met him because of how much we talk and tell stories about him, which makes him live on. And because of that, I have no doubt that Dad's legacy will live on for years and years, even after I'm gone. My kids may never meet him, but they will know him. So here's a promise I wish to give out to my rock, my structure, my dad. I will make sure your legacy lives on through every moment in my life. I will carry your love with me always. I will never stop loving you or trying to make you proud. And I know, sorry. I'm shaking out. <laughs> and I'll know every step of the way with every new chapter I have before me that you are behind where I am today. And that alone will make me know you're still guiding me. I love you, Dad. Yeah, they keep getting harder and harder. And that's, uh, you spoke about character and that's what Deacon Dave said when we were outside when he first arrived with that card, he he knew you. He felt the pride uh, of your parents through each one of those. So thank you so much for sharing those words. It was beautiful. As we said before, we're going to, before the uh, some of the other uh, children kind of conclude our time together, we wanted to give a chance for uh, some of the nieces, nephews to come forward um, to show. Yeah, no, you guys are going to go at the end. Yeah, we're just going to we're gonna uh, have any of the nieces or nephews if they want to speak first before we continue. Anybody have something in their heart they want to share? Sure, just come on up. God's on Patrick. I, I didn't write anything. Um, but there's not much that I can say that you guys didn't say, but, uh, you guys talked about charity. That was evident. You guys talked about family. Uh, but one of the things that Uncle Pete did that was very special is, uh, vocation. Um, he loved all of your vocations, artists and and you know, forever student and, <laughs> and and teacher and librarian and mother and sibling uh, uncle but most importantly uh for me it was the vocation of godfather um, there are a lot of times where uh i might feel like a stranger in a room full of people that i love and love me but i was never a stranger to my uncle uh, he always could connect and help me uh, understand things, whether it be issues with family or mental health or faith or work. Uh, he would always uh, really serve as that center uh, source where I knew that if I spoke to my father, I'd get truth. And if I spoke to my godfather, I'd get truth. And when you get that surrounding you, there is something important about that, that he took the vocation of every role in his life seriously. Son, 
He didn't want to get in trouble. <laughs> Brother, he had to look out for. And Father, obviously what you guys are talking about, and we're going to hear probably a lot more, but I just want you guys to know that I appreciate the vocations of Uncle Pete. And I appreciate the vocation that he had of my godfather. And, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Pat. Would anybody else like to share before we continue with our speakers? Okay. I would encourage all of you watching, I know, again, different times, there'd be a line of speakers out the door and you can't see it in the casket from your vantage point, but there's two little pillows inside the casket that say loving bop bop with pictures of his, his two precious little angels there. We would love for all of you in um, your own time and your own space. It doesn't have to be today. It doesn't have to be tomorrow. As a matter of fact, I hope it's not for a week, two weeks, three weeks. But I would love for you to write a note to his little ones, about Pete, a funny story, a memory. Heck, if nothing else, write a letter to PJ himself and just tell him what you're thinking and send it to the family. If you don't have their address, send it here. We'll be happy to forward it along. And as life keeps moving, which it will do, and you're reminded of different events about PJ, just stop, get out a pen and paper, and write it down. You notice I didn't say type it or email it. I said write it down. That was purposeful. With his pen. He was a pen aficionado. That's one of the reasons why I think we would have very much gotten along. But write it down because when you actually handwrite it, even if you're a lefty like me with doctor's handwriting, it can be a very beautiful sentiment and the words pour out of your heart. So please don't be afraid to just stop the busyness of life and make sure you send that to the family. Uh, it does matter and it does make a difference. Words are also not the only thing um, that can have uh, an effect. We know PJ was very much a lover of, of music and I've always said when words fail, there's a note <laughs> and not a N-O-T-E in the sense of paper and pen. But music has always touched the hearts. So I'm going to ask his son, minus the in-law, Jason, to come forward, who's going to share with us some words first and then play a piece of music, which he'll explain why he selected this particular piece. Don't make me cry. Don't make me cry. Shaggy? Taco? Jackson? Swedish Chef, Gordo, Walter, Cupid Brown. I'm sure I've abridged the list unintentionally. Anyone who knows PJ could probably guess that those goofy titles are PJ's silly string of nicknames for me. He had one for everybody, <laughs> which sometimes made us roll our eyes, but, uh, <laughs> and, uh, everyone in his family and which is part of his sense of humor. He told me once that uh, he only gives nicknames to people who he loves, so he must have loved us all a lot. PJ and Maya's relationship developed... <clears throat> PJ and Maya's re relationship developed and grew so much over the years. I remember when we first met before Lauren and I had started dating. For some reason, he loved to tell this story about how he had a tractor for burying things in his backyard. <laughs> Must be that sense of humor again, I don't know. I got a couple of those Uncle John head shakes too in there. <laughs> but jokes aside, from the day we first met, he was so welcoming and generous, inviting me to dinner when they visited Virginia Beach, insisting that I got <clears throat> any, anything I wanted on the menu, and offering such welcoming conversations and sentiments throughout the dinner. And since that day, PJ has grown into so much more than a father, father-in-law to me. To me, PJ was a mentor, a father figure, and a friend. I'd like to speak a bit on the incredible in impact he's had on me in each of these roles. First is a mentor. 
PJ is an inspiration in so many ways. <clears throat> he always worked impossibly hard in his career. Why? Not for the money, not for the glory or prestige of a title, or the perks that come along with a professional position. He works so incredibly hard for one reason, his family. He was the epitome of a family man. He expressed to me on countless occasions that he didn't know how he got so lucky and so blessed to, ha to in his life to have such an amazing family. His kids have told me over and over that despite how hard he worked, he never missed a single after-school activity. And he inspires me to be that kind of hard-working, supportive father when I have kids of my own. I also learned so much from PJ about the finer things in life. From how to pair and enjoy a fine wines and whiskeys to investing in vice, undoubtedly worth thousands of dollars over the years, to the craft of woodworking, which he learned from his grandfather, to, simple and elegant to his simple and elegant mantra, love one another. Second, as a father figure, <clears throat> as full as PJ's heart was with the love of his family, he found even more room when our son-in-laws came into the picture. Despite how much he loved to tell us that a favorite tractor joke of his, <laughs> he was always so welcoming, generous, and loving toward us. As the years went on, he always told the three of us that he loved us so much that he thought of us as sons of his own, and he really did make me feel that love. After visiting historical Williamsburg and learning of our mutual fondness for harpsichord music, I decided to record an album of harpsichord versions of his favorite artists, such as Simon and Garfunkel and Lady Gaga, his eclectic tastes. Every time we rode anywhere in the car together, he made a point to play that CD to show how much he loved and appreciated my music. He, he would always watch my band's Facebook Live performances and add such positive comments that would flash across the screen to encourage me as I played. He loved supporting my music so much. <clears throat> Every time we went to visit or shared a family vacation together, he would say, Jason, I just have one request. Please bring the keyboard so we can listen to you share your music. One year for his birthday, <clears throat> he came to visit Lauren and I, and we cooked him fish and clams, which were some, <clears throat> were some of his favorite foods. And when I tell you he raved about those clams, I mean, he talked about them for years later. <laughs> In fact, he may well be enjoying clams with his parents right now, along with a cold Irish beer. But to be honest, it wasn't really about the clams. It was about him making me feel like a... It was about him making me feel like a million bucks over something that I created. And since... Since he knew how much I loved to cook, he took this a step further by always surprising us with generous gifts of ingredients such as meats, vegetables, and seafood that could inspire me to in my culinary creations. We ha he'd say, we have to send inspiration for the Swedish chef, he would say, <laughs> as if it was just so natural to send that kind of support. I will miss so much sending him the Foodies Anonymous Marco Polo videos of our meals that came to life because of his undying support and generosity. During quarantine, I decided to build some wooden shelves with Lauren to store my growing collection of percussion instruments. So I kind of have a problem <laughs> with instrument collection. <laughs> Along with my own dad, I started a Woody's Anonymous Marco Polo video thread to seek advice from them about one of PJ's passions, woodworking. Over the course of months, with much, criti uh, with much critical guidance from my dad and PJ, Lauren and I created beautiful artistic shelves that hang in our house. PJ would always encourage me to show them off to the rest of the family during video calls. But, <clears throat> but now when I look at that, uh, now when I look at them, my heart bursts with pride and love, knowing that despite being torn apart by the pandemic, Lauren, my dad, and PJ actually built those shelves together. Ooh, this is hard. I don't know how y'all did it. Ooh. Finally, as a friend, 
This aspect of our relationship is honestly the most unexpected development. And to be honest, the, the transition from simply a father-son father son in law to friendship was so smooth and natural that I'm not even sure when or how it even happened exactly. Well, I do know there was a quite a quite a bit of Irish whiskey involved along the journey. <laughs> My absolute favorite memories of PJ were when we would visit each other and we would feast on seafood and wine and enjoy the laughter and warm conversation of our big family. Or when we'd enjoy a glass of whiskey. When we'd enjoy a glass of whiskey one on one and we got to have incredibly deep and or silly conversations, depending on our mood and how much, probably, alcohol we've had. <laughs> we discuss history, spirituality, and yes, even politics. We tossed corny dad jokes back and forth to each other and built a wonderful rapport through these meaningful conversations. We are able to cultivate a relationship where we could challenge and learn from each other trust each other, laugh with each other, and best of all, love each other. <sighs> Even though it seems like PJ left us too soon, he will always be with me in my heart as a mentor, a second father, and a loving friend. I would now like to share with you an Irish hymn that I know PJ would have loved. <sighs> Not to make him proud, but because I want him to know that I was proud of him. So PJ, this is for you. Shaggy, taco, Swedish chef, silly piano guy, etc. Signing off. Don't let me forget my iPad, everybody.
Again, they get harder as we go. But if there's ever somebody who could bat clean up, it would be the namesake with the fourth. So we're going to ask Peter to come forward and share with us a little bit about his dad. Oh, I, I so don't got this. <laughs> this is incredibly tough for me. So forgive me, you guys all did really well at this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be on the floor, so and I'm going to keep going, so just stick with me, okay? And the second thing I want to say is this is going to be a little unconventional for what people typically expect me to talk to. This is my soul and my whole best attempt at paying tribute to my dad, and exactly, I know so confidently... This is what I would, he would want me to talk to. Oh. Dad, you're an amazing man, Dad. But it is hard for me to feel bad for you right now. <laughs> your goal in life was to take care of the people around you, your family, your coworkers, your friends, and even people you didn't know. And you nailed that goal. You were fulfilled in the most important ways and live such a meaningful life. For that reason, what I have to say will be more for those you momentarily left behind than for you. You were a learner, and you devoutly pushed everyone around you to be learners. And for that, to honor you and what you want, I'd like to reflect on what I think we can learn from you. Whew, I told you I'd be floor. <clears throat> Two main things come to mind that we can learn from what you did right. First of all, your unconditional honesty. For better or worse, this is a core value that you instilled in your family. Something that we can hold on to. A way we can take care of others and hold ourselves accountable in all of our relationships, personal or professional. This is a rock, a foundation we can stand on. Thank you, Dad. Second of all, you gave aggressively <laughs> in whatever ways you could. You expanded so far so that you could give as much as you could. You gave us privilege in this world so that we might have the option to follow our passions and do what we love so that we could learn as much as we could with the best educations. You gave to your coworkers, saving people's jobs during tough transitions and challenging those around you, even when it was uncomfortable, to help them in their growth. Always kind to waiters and housekeepers and keeping up with different charities and giving them support. Thank you, Dad. One main thing comes to mind that you did wrong. And you would want me to say this. One of the last things you told me is to not repeat your mistakes. You specifically warned me against working too hard. You were a martyr. You gave everything to the people around you and kept nothing for yourself. This caused problems, grief, and pain. I love you so much for asking me to learn from what you did wrong. This is how absurdly great you are. That is it. That's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. To that end, I want to offer a reminder for those of you who left behind. We need to take care of ourselves and each other. But we need to take care of ourselves so that we are able to take care of each other. Moving forward, what would Dad want? I am so confident that he would want this to be a positive spiral, not cause a negative spiral. Mm -hmm that he would want us to celebrate his life, be happy for his journey, and his current bliss in his life after. And he would want us to use him to learn and grow immensely. In whatever ways we were able, he would want us to take care of ourselves and each other. Thank you, Dad. You showed me the direction. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> and I'm going to give aggressively for you. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> I know you were more.
more karate, but that was a home run. <laughs> For those of you watching virtually, as you come into the main chapel, we have a Celtic cross on the wall with all pictures of many of you uh, probably who are watching right now. And on it, there's a passage from Corinthians. And it was selected specifically for your family as you came in because it says, Faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. You can imagine sitting here, I hear a lot of things over the years. But I put that there because as I've spoken to you over the last week, I thought I kind of had the crux of who you were as a family figured out, led by a true patriarch and of course matriarch. And you didn't let me down because you showed your true character and you each did it grounded in love. And Peter, as you just said, my hope and my prayer for all of the families we serve is they walk out of here stronger. And as you said, Dad would only want you to walk out of here stronger in your faith, whatever that is, grounded in hope and the promises that that brings, but doing everything with what you just said, love. If someone could stand before my casket, as you all did, by PJs, and say he truly lived a life of love. As you all said, it doesn't matter the newest car. It doesn't matter the most vacations. You all summed it up well. One song can spark a moment. One whisper can wake the dream. One tree can start a forest. One bird can herald spring. One smile begins a friendship. One moment can make one fall in love. One star can guide a ship at sea. One vote can change a nation. One sunbeam lights a room. One candle wipes out darkness. One laugh will conquer gloom. One step must start each journey. One word must start each prayer. One hope will raise your spirits. One touch can show you care. One voice can speak with wisdom. One heart can know what's true. One life can make a difference. You see, it's simply up to you. Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Peter died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. and Peter received the sign of the cross that he now shared Christ's victory over sin and death.
Let us pray. O God, whose nature is always to forgive and show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant Peter, whom you have called today to journey to you. And since he hoped and believed in you, grant that he may be led to our true homeland to delight in its everlasting joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. A just man, though he die early, shall be at rest. For the age that is honorable comes not from the passing of time, nor can it be measured in terms of years. Rather, understanding is the hoary crown of man, and an unsullied life the attainment of old age. He who pleased God was loved. He who lived among sinners was transported, snatched away, lest wickedness pervert his mind or deceit beguile his soul. For the witchery of palmer, palmery things obscures what is right, and the whirl of desire transforms the innocent mind. Having become perfect in a short while, he reached the fullness of a long career, for his soul was pleasing to the Lord. Therefore, he sped him out of the midst of wickedness, but the people saw and did not understand, nor did they take this into account, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. Love is not pompous. It's not inflated. It is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. Friends, the Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When he saw the crowds, Jesus went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. You. 
even I'm coming down from my perch, a little social dis distancing, but I did want to come and maybe just come up a little bit closer to wish you and your family condolences as we say so long to Peter, your beloved husband and father and grandfather. During this time, I thought about what we could do to help Peter. Um, I understand Peter helped a lot of people, and I think that it'd be good to help him. It, one of the best ways that we can help Peter is to continue to pray for him. That's one of the things I like about being Catholic, that we help one another, and just because a loved one has died doesn't mean that we can't help them anymore, and they can't help us. Being part of the family doesn't uh, go away when someone dies. And for Catholics, we believe that prayer is communicating with God. And prayer is one way that we can do, that we can do to help one another. In the Catholic Church, we say that we pray for the repose of the soul of a beloved loved one. So we pray for Peter and his soul as we commend him to the Lord. And that prayers or those prayers really help. We can pray for Peter every time that we come to Mass. There's always a spot where we pray for the, those who have died. And we believe that, that those prayers will be beneficial to those who have died. We also have in our church here opportunities to light candles for those who have died. And that is just another way of reminding us of them and their memory and praying for them, lighting a candles for them. But I think the most best way that we can uh, help Peter is to remember his words of counsel and his motto, his mantra, which I'm reading here and I'm saying, boy, this is my homily. <laughs> if, if this is a, a, just one way that we can remember a Peter and uh, I'm sure he would be glad if we really did practice this. So what, what does he say? He says, uh, uh, work hard, all right, and, and be kind, all right, and um, I love that. And dream big, and dream big. We don't want to forget that. I love that uh, first one, dreaming big. Uh, we have to remember that um, we're thankful for being here in our great country. We have a lot of opportunities, but we also have to remember that God has a plan for us. It's not just our dreams, but also, what has God given us to do to be the person that we are called to be on this earth? No matter who we are, God has a plan for us. And he's dreaming big, all right? And he wants us to go to him and ask him to enlighten us of what he wants us to do in life and how he wants us to do it. That would include our vocation to marriage, okay? Um, I, I see here that... Uh, uh, that Peter met you even at, the, at some conference or something like that, and he, he seemed to kind of know that you, when he saw you, that you were the one. But um, I'm, I'm sure the Lord was working in and through that. So dreaming big is a wonderful way in which we can honor Peter today by invoking the Holy Spirit to give us guidance in that regard. I also see here that he asks us to uh, work hard, and that is um, also a wonderful Christian uh, thing to, to do. Um, uh, in the seminary, uh, we were told that if we don't pray and work hard, we don't eat, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> we prayed and worked hard and studied because we all wanted to eat. And again, the Bible, some Bible verses, I'm thinking that a labor deserves his wage, and that the Lord wants us to work hard and do the best that we can. When we work, we're also praying. I think, I don't know how you think about things, but when I'm at the hospital and I'm visiting people, I'm doing my work, but I'm also, that's sort of like my ministry too, and I'm incorporating working hard and also working for the Lord. And when we work, uh, we have to see it that way. It's not just working for yourself and your family, but you're also, from a Christian point of view, you're also working to build up the kingdom of God and to make this place, a be this world a better place. 
So how can we do that? How can we work hard and build a better place, build a better world? The gospel here, the Beatitudes are a wonderful example of that. Putting our faith into action through love. And we heard some examples about being kind, being merciful, being a peacemaker. How are we doing with that? Instead of, you know, being confrontational, instead of maybe uh, argumentative, what are the ways that we can do to bring peace, to bring reconciliation? Um, we might have to ask for forgiveness in that regard. I don't know about you, but oftentimes I fail in that. And when I am the cause of that, the best thing for me to do is for me to go to that person and say, please forgive me, um, and try to make reconciliation. If they come to you and ask for forgiveness, we need to be quick to forgive them and say, you are forgiven. And so these are the ways in which we put our faith into action through love, the corporal and spiritual works of mercy, and also the Beatitudes. Of course, God helps us to do that. We all ultimately need God's grace to be the person God wants us to be. And with God's grace, one day we will all be with our um, brother Peter in heaven where there's no more crying, no more saying goodbye. Uh, we don't need any more motivational speakers because we're going to be with the Lord and everything is going to be uh, wonderful, praising God and loving Him and loving one another. In the, in the end, these things that love will last. So, Peter, please pray for us as we continue to uh, walk the way that God has given us and we'll continue to pray for you. And one day we hope and pray that we will be reunited with you in heaven. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let the perpetual light shine upon him. May our brother Peter rest in peace and may his soul and the souls of all the faithfully departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Please stand. Brothers and sisters, we come before you now and we ask you to hear our prayers and petitions. Friends, our Lord Jesus Christ is here. He is risen, risen from the dead, and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in him, let us now join our prayers to his. Our response today is, Lord, hear our prayer. Let's try that. Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Peter received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brother Peter, who was nourished at the table of the Savior, welcome him now into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them into the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For those who trusted in the Lord, 
Now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all those whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray now for uh, Peter's family. We want to mention in particular today his beloved wife, Eva, and his children and their spouses, uh, Kathleen and Douglas, Lauren and Jason, Shannon and John, and also his son, Peter. We also have his granddaughters who uh, love Grandpa. Lord God, we pray for the entire family as they seek comfort and consolation. Please heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Friends, we are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Peter. Strengthen our hope that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Father God, forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in your kingdom. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Please stand. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Peter, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever.
Friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For in the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. History of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Peter, whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters, too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeking you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Please stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we wait the blessed hope 
and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Friends, at this time, those who are Catholic and well-disposed may come up and receive our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. For Holy Communion, I'll be in the center here near the Paschal Candle. So please come up through the center aisle and return through the side aisle. Thank you.
Let us pray. Be, we, be near, O Lord, we pray to your servant Peter, on whose funeral day we offer you the sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to him or any human fault have afflicted him, may by your love it all be forgiven and wiped away. And grant, almighty God, that your servant who has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, and so receive everlasting joys of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Peter. And now we come to the last farewell. Indeed, there is sadness in parting. But we take great comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Peter again and enjoy his friendship. Although his family and friends here today will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our dear brother Peter in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the many blessings which you bestowed upon Peter in this life. 
They are indeed signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith. Until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our dear brother Peter forever, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Eva, on behalf of Wright and Ford Funeral Home and St. Mary Magdalene Deposit Church, we present to you a beautiful memorial of your husband, Peter, his love for you and your love for him and the family. May he rest in peace. Thank you. Amen. Friends, let us now take our brother Peter to his place of rest. Brother Peter has gone to his rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome him to the table of God's children in heaven. 
with faith and hope in eternal life, let us assist him now with our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord also for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with our brother. Together may we meet Christ Jesus when he who is our life appears in glory. For we read in sacred scripture, Jesus Christ is the firstborn of the dead. To him be glory and power forever and ever, amen. Lord Jesus Christ, by your own three days in the tomb, you hallowed the graves of all who believe in you. And so made the grave a sign of hope that promises resurrection, even as it claims our mortal bodies. Grant that our dear brother may sleep here in peace until you awaken him to glory. For you are the resurrection and the life. Then he will see you face to face, and in your light will see light, and know the splendor of God. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Because God has chosen to call our dear brother from this life to himself, we commit his body to its final resting place. We are dust, and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory. For he is risen, the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our brother now to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace him in peace and raise up his body on the last day. For our brother Peter, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me shall live, even in death. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Our response, Lord, have mercy. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Peter and dry the tears of those who weep. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. You raise the dead to life. Give our brother Peter eternal life. We pray to the Lord. You promise paradise to the repentant thief. Bring Peter to the joys of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints. We pray to the Lord. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table of your heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of Peter. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal joy our hope. Let us, pr we pray to the Lord. With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us pray now as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, through the death of your Son on the cross, you destroyed our death. Through his rest in the tomb, you hauled the graves of all who believe in you. 
And through his rising again, you restored us to eternal life. God of the living and the dead, accept our prayers for those who have died in Christ and are buried with him in the hope of rising again. To say we're true to your name on earth, let them praise you forever in the joy of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. And may his soul, the souls of all the faithfully departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. And may the love of God and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ bless and console us. And gently wipe away every tear from our eyes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Peter, go in the peace of Christ. Thanks. Thanks.